Danico Autry has been suspended for six games for violating the NFL's policy on performance enhancing drugs. He is out for six games and he had a statement. He says this quickly over the course of my 10 year NFL career. I have never engaged in any use of performance enhancing drugs over that period. I have been subject to countless tests, none of which have I ever returned a positive result. I was therefore stunned this off season, which is interesting, Clint, that they, when they hear this off season, not necessarily meaning just like this just happened, but stunned this off season when I learned that one of my tests returned with a positive result. I immediately investigated the matter and discovered that a pharmacy to which my doctor submitted a prescription for a different medication had, whether in, in, intentionally, recklessly, or neg negligently, included a banned substance. I want to be clear, at no time did I know or even suspect that this medication contained a banned substance. So he is going to... Uh, be suspended for six games. He also uh, went on to say, I want to apologize to the Texans organization, my teammates and the fans for any distraction that this may cause. Finally, I want to assure our fans that my commitment to competing to the best of my ability has only grown, and I look forward to return to the field. That is from Danico Autry. He is not fighting this, Clinton Tyler. He is accepting the six-game uh, the six game. Uh, punishment here, and he will be gone for six. And right off the bat, this is my thought. Now, I'll throw this out to you and the people, Clint Tyler, 713 713-572-4610, 713-572-4610. Those of you on YouTube and Twitch can join in on this. Um, how big a deal is this? How, how big a deal, right? This isn't one of your... You know, Daniil Hunter, C.J. Stroud, Diggs, Stingley... Your uh, uh, Tunzel front line guys, but this is uh, still one of your big offseason pickups, a guy that, that was going to be a part of this defense. How big a deal is the loss for the first six games of the season of Danico Autry? Well, look, I think it's a, a huge deal. I mean, this. So you put it in huge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you can argue that this is the most important guy on this defense in terms of them taking the next step. I mean, they, they did not address their interior defensive line uh, the way that they had hoped to. Um, I think they tried, but they didn't land the guys that they wanted to. And the answer was Danico Autry was going to play inside and outside. And all we heard since free agency, since they signed Danico Autry, was, man, he had 11 sacks last year. I mean, this guy this guy can play inside. I'm telling you, he can, they're trying to convince that he can play inside. This guy, whether, whether you believe that he was going to be the force inside uh, on every single down, not just passing downs or not, regardless of how you – felt about Danico Autry and him being the answer to the issues inside for the Houston Texans. He was definitely who they were going to lean into. He was definitely a, a defensive end that is going to be asked to play. He slated as line. their starting defensive tackle. Absolutely. And so any way you slice it, they were depending on him in a major, major way at a, at a position of weakness, interior defensive line, and now your best player in that room is is gone for six weeks. Now, I would assume there's going to be an appeal, probably drop it down to three weeks, what, three games, whatever. No, I don't think this is going to be an appeal. Oh, you don't it's think so? It's PDs. It's, uh, it's I mean, usually I, hit at six. Oh, okay. Well, I, I would damn sure appeal if, if it was a, 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 a prescription that was bad by, by a pharmacy or well, a doctor they're, they're or something. They're talking about he's going to bring lawyers in, involved right, in this. Right, but yeah. with the, with Either the way pharmacy. it goes. I mean, if, if, it's, if, it's not, if it's not appealed and, 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 uh, and – decrease then you're looking at six but but here's the deal it's a big deal any way you slice it because you're looking at a, a third of the season um uh, you're gonna you're gonna miss who was your answer to the the interior defensive line woes to the defensive front um this guy was supposed to be a a, a difference maker and you're missing him you're, you're losing him for week one versus the colts right week two versus the bears week three versus the vikings Week four versus the Jaguars, week five versus the Bills, and week six versus the Patriots. Um, you got the Colts that are going to come downhill. Not real sure what the Bears are going to do yet, but you got the Colts that are going to come downhill at your chin, and you got the Bills that are definitely going to come downhill at your chin. And I would I would imagine that the Patriots are going to do their damnedest, and the Vikings with their young quarterback, with their quarterback situations, to come downhill at your chin. So that run defense, I I, I, 
right now you've got to be concerned about it. Well, and and and, and Clint, you were going to be concerned about it with him in it. Absolutely, and, and because you know the run, the run defense it may get better because right now, Clint, they are they are Foley, Tim Settle, Mario Edwards, Khalil Davis, Kurt Hines. Like that's when when you take out Danico Autry, that's that's where you are in the interior at this point. And like you said, he's your most accomplished player. Although one could argue he he's more of a D end. Uh, than he is than he is a, a a defensive tackle, especially in a in a four three defense. Right. So, but, but LeBron, if, if you ask somebody it, it, with this team and said, "Hey, what what is this? Give me one player that's that that this performance of this this defense kind of hinges on." I, I think they would start with Danico. He's got to be he's got to be a force inside and out. He's got to be depth at defensive end. He's got to be he's got to be a problem versus the run and the pass at defensive tackle. I mean, this guy's an integral part. Given that that's the weakness, and that, this guy's an integral part to, to them being better than they were last year. And see, that's what I think the big hit is, is not really the run, although we'll see what happens. It's the best thing that this defense, that I would say walking into the year, you'd say they're full strength. The best thing they do is rush the passer, right? Like when you say, hey, man, we, we're going to put Danico Entry on passing downs. We're going to have him over a guard or a center. And we're gonna have those two, Will Anderson and, and and Daniel Hunter on the outside. Like we can get after the passer when you start to have those three guys on the field together. And now, you, you, you know, for the first six weeks of the season, you're gonna take that away. For the first six of the six weeks of the season, yeah, uh, you're you're going to lose the ability to have that that pass rushing type of a unit on the field, which I think is the strongest thing that you would say walking into it that they do. So this, uh, I. I it's obviously it's not like losing Daniel Hunter for six games, or losing Will Anderson or Derek Stingley or Christian Harris. Even I, I think you could argue for six games. But to the point you're making is this was a guy that they had big plans to play inside and outside, and arguably the most accomplished guy they have when you talk about the guys on the inside, and he and he is going going to be out. The next point about it, and I see people on the text line wondering is. Do they need to make a move? Is it so much so that they have six games here without him? Do they need to make a move? Or are they good enough with what they have? Are you comfortable with the Texans rolling with Foley, Tim Settle, Mario Edwards, Kurt Heinisch, Khalil Davis on the inside? Or do they need to make a significant move for these first six weeks to kind of fill the void of Danico Autry? I don't think it changes. I don't think it changes course. Like I, like I, I, I as I've you'd said, wait from, it out. You'd well, wait the six. No, no, hell no, I wouldn't. I, like I told you from jump, oh, you right? made a move. Before. No, I, look, I, I think it's, I think it's absolutely paramount that the, the Texans make a move when, when these cuts take place. There's going to be some really good defensive linemen on the streets. Yeah, and and if the Texans aren't like I, I, I expected them to be really aggressive. And, and not, look, it's not about what what I think about the guys they have in house. I mean, those guys they, they may feel confident in those guys. But look at what the Texans did. The Texans went out there and tried to land a couple of big fish in free agency in terms of interior defensive linemen. They, they told were trying. they yeah. told all of us that they 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 want to get better at the interior defensive line position, right? And so it it, it only makes sense that when when a, a, a big chunk of defensive tackles hit the streets that the Texans are one of the more active teams. It only makes sense if you are one of those defensive tackles, and if you're one of the top five defensive tackles, and there's going to be some really good ones get released at, at, at cut day. If you're one of the top five, it only makes sense the Texans are on your short list. I mean, if you're a defensive tackle right yeah. now that you feel like you're a legit NFL so you dude, can play, you, you want to be you want to be in this camp right here. I mean, you 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 want to be you don't want to be sitting behind. Uh, you know, all pro and pro bowl guys working your ass off, all, all, like like right now, like like our boy Blake Fisher over here. Not, trust me, he's getting work, and he's getting worked. I mean, he's he's he is both. I mean, no, look, I mean, just in in a good way, in a good way. He's getting he's getting great reps. But reality is, is if Larry Tunsil stays healthy, he ain't gonna touch the field all year long, more than likely. So it, it's it's and that's good for him right now. But if you're one of these second, third, fourth year defensive tackles. That's trying to get that opportunity. You got a chance to make a move. I mean, sitting behind a guy that's going to play a, a boatload of snaps and he's an All Pro and he's going to make all. Nah, hell, you come here, you show up and show out. I mean, you you very very well could be the guy getting 60 percent of the snaps. Yeah, text line coming in. No moves needed. They'll be fine. 
Uh, is Jerry Hughes uh, a DT or a DN? Jerry Hughes is a defensive end. Defensive end. Why he's wearing sweatpants out there at practice, I, I don't know. Trying to get a sweat in. Even in the like full, you. He wanted, even he Friday in, in full. But he's 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 in full rain. I mean, it's rain and he's soaking wet. He's got he's got pants he's got pants on. Like not tight ones either. He's got, got the, the, the sweat. He's got the old man, the old baggy, the old baggy. The gray, the gray ones, like the ladies, like. No, these were blue. Oh, they 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 were not the gray with the where you could see the the, the unit. It, it was it was the blue, kind of like the ones I had when I was playing with the straight zipper down each ankle. You know, where you had to not. They weren't just automatically oh, yeah, bunched up. Yeah. So, you know, they they and man, they were soaking wet. And I'm like, what is he doing? I mean, he, he's 30 minutes into practice, soaking wet. Yeah. Today, today, Jerry used uh, he got his helmet off. He got his helmet off, Ron. And I look out there. He has got a hoodie. Texas kid. He's got a hoodie under. Bro, just I ain't joking. I've never seen this all my he's years. Sweat. He's sweat. got a hoodie on. Under the pants. The hood on. The hood on. The, oh, the he's got actual the hood, on. hood on. He's got it on. And a Gatorade towel on his head. And he yanks his helmet down over it. He's 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 wearing two layers under his helmet. Somebody should stop him from wearing all that. I mean, what's the what's the point? I mean, he wants to get a real good. I mean, sweat. he is serious. You know what he looks like? He looks like those people at that YMCA that that stopped me when I was doing jumping jacks in the sauna. Those people who ran me down. Yes, yeah, so, yeah said, that that guy, that, me, whoever, <laughs> whoever, whoever that ran guy me down. was. Hey Agreed. man, you can't you can't Agreed. do exercise then you're gonna pass out. Agreed. Yeah. Go, <laughs> hey, hey, look, you can't put a, you can't put a hoodie and a Gatorade towel on yeah. your head oh. and a helmet. Yeah. It was hot today too, man. They've been really lucky up to up to this. Well, I had one hot day. Um, before this, but today today was a today was a scorcher, my friend. Yeah, I, I just want to say that people said no moves needed. I, oh, I disagree. I I thought they I thought they were in the need in need of a move with him. <laughs> like I thought they were in need of a move interior wise with him. And, and and I'm not saying it had to be like it it at least another you know rot, rotation piece at least. But I mean when you like I mean they hell they told you they went from. Eric Armstead trying to bring back Sheldon Rankins to the plan that they had. Like they were trying, like you said, they were trying. So uh, to me, it felt like, you know, if they could, if they could find improvements around yeah, that they, that they should do that. And that was with him. Definitely the first six weeks, six weeks that he's going, I, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like they, they could stand to, to make an addition to that room. We'll see. But Danico Autry out. The first six weeks, if you uh, if you missed it, by the.